an equal housing lender. Friday, Friday, Friday. Good morning, America. Good morning, America. Good morning, America. Friday. It's time for Morning Today with Jonathan Mark on AM 1480 WLEA. Oh, Paul Harvey, frantic as usual, and as usual, he knows when it's Friday. I don't know how he does it. Anyway, it is Friday, 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 finally Friday. Next stop is the weekend, and off we go. You know, I was thinking uh, there are so many negative things in the news right now. There's the chaos in Washington. There's what's going on in Albany. That's always pretty negative. There's, uh, let me see, the crisis at the border. And there's a lot of drug use. And people are firing missiles. North Korea fired another one. As a matter of fact, we tested a missile, I think, yesterday or the day before. It was a short-range missile. So people are firing missiles, and everybody's upset over everything. And I'm thinking, you know, it's such a gloomy, overcast, rainy morning that I think this entire show is going to be kind of on the lighter side. I mean, why not? There's enough negative stuff out there. There are all kinds of shows you can listen to to hear all the negative. But I'm just going to try to say just a little positive on this show. And, of course, uh, let me see. Hmm, Sunday is Mother's Day. That's right. So be sure you get Mom something. Flowers. Maybe take her to dinner. Maybe cook dinner for her. Why not? I'll give her a card. Do something to show a mom that she's really important. And she is because moms are important. And this morning I was doing a little background research on Mother's Day. What a surprise. And Mother's Day, they had a form of Mother's Day back in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. They had celebrations to celebrate moms. Isn't that cool? And so then we skip ahead like 2,000 years. That was quick. Uh, so let me see. I don't know. I, normally I cite my sources Actually, I think I always cite my sources, but this one, I have it. I printed it out, and I don't know where it's from. (laughs) I have no idea. Anyway, it says, Establishment of Mother's Day. The modern holiday of Mother's Day was first celebrated in 1908 when Annie Jarvis held a memorial for her mom at St. Andrew's Methodist Church in Grafton, West Virginia. St. Andrew's uh, now holds the International Mother's Day Shrine. Her campaign to make Mother's Day a recognized holiday in the United States began in 1905, the year her mother, Ann Reeves Jarvis, died. Ann Jarvis had been a peace activist who cared for wounded soldiers on both sides of the American Civil War and created Mother's Day work clubs to address public health issues. Ann and Jarvis wanted to honor her mother by continuing the work she started and to set aside a day to honor all mothers because she believed a mother is, quote, the person who has done more for you than anyone in the world. And when you think of it, that's a little more true than you'd really, you'd really realize because, let's face it, were it not for your mom, you wouldn't be here listening. So moms are pretty important. Anyway, uh, in 1908, the U.S. Congress rejected a proposal to make Mother's Day an official holiday joking that they would have to proclaim a mother-in-law's day. It doesn't seem too funny, but anyway. uh, However, owing to the efforts of Anna Jarvis, by 1911, all U.S. states observed the holiday, with some officially recognizing Mother's Day as a local holiday. And in 1914, Woodrow Wilson signed a proclamation designating Mother's Day held on the second Sunday in May as a national holiday to honor our moms, right? Although Jarvis was successful in founding Mother's Day, she became resentful of the commercialization of the holiday. And by the early 1920s, Hallmark cards, there's Hallmark again, boy, they are all over the place. Anyway, Hallmark cards and other companies had started selling Mother's Day cards. Jarvis thought that the companies had misinterpreted and exploited the idea of Mother's Day and that the emphasis of the holiday was on sentiment and not profit. And as a result, she organized boycotts of Mother's Day and threatened to issue lawsuits against the companies involved. I guess things don't change. I'll sue. I'll sue. Yes, sir. So Jarvis argued that people should appreciate and honor their mothers through handwritten letters expressing their love and gratitude instead of buying gifts and pre-made cards. She protested at a candy makers convention in Philadelphia in 1923 and at a meeting of American war mothers in 1925. By this time, carnations had, been associated, had become associated with Mother's Day, and the selling of carnations by the American War Mothers to raise money angered Jarvis, who was arrested for disturbing the peace. Okay, there you go. And then it goes on and on and on. Anyway, so that, now, you know, I don't agree with that. 
the commercialization of Mother's Day. Okay, you know, I mean, Christmas is, and Fourth of July, and President's Day, and why not Mother's Day? I mean, really. So I think, you know, a, um, a store-bought card is a pretty nice, and some cards out there are really elaborate. I mean, they're, they're really neat. And, uh, to, you know, to buy her something that's been advertised as, you know, a thing for Mother's Day, I don't see anything wrong with that. I really don't. How about flowers? Huh? How about flowers? That's right. So that's really not all too bad an idea. So I don't know. I don't agree with her. But nonetheless, Sunday is Mother's Day. Now, huh. how do I start this? How about a personal anecdote on Mother's Day? Okay. We have to go all the way, way back machine. Remember that? In the way back machine. So now I'm 10 years old. And I remember I was 10 years old because several months previously, I had turned 10 in November. So it was a big deal. My mom and dad made a big deal of me being 10 years old. The big 1-0. That's right, the big 1-0. So it was no longer single digits. Now I'm 10 years old. It was a, whole, it was a brand new ball game. So, okay, I'm 10 years old. And it's somewhere, oh, maybe in March or something, a couple of months after that. And I went to my friend's house. His name was Brian, by the way. I just, I just thought his name was Brian. And uh, his parents bought him roller skates for his birthday. And I saw the roller skates and said, hey, that's really neat. So we went down to Forest Avenue School. It was, I think, an intermediate school. It was grades, uh, let me see, four, five, and six. So was that an intermediate school? I think maybe, I don't know. Anyway, so we went down to Forest Avenue School. This is on Long Island. So we take the uh, roller skates down there, and he's roller skating around on these roller skates. And then uh, he would let me try them, and I would roller skate a little bit and then give it back. We'd go back and forth, you know. Now, these roller skates, these were, uh, they, they don't make these anymore. You could probably find these in any antique store, I think. And it was, uh, what, a, huh, what a contraption. It was shaped like the sole of a shoe, and it was made of metal. And on the bottom were four rickety metal wheels. And on the top, in both the front and the back, the uh, toe and the heel, there were two clamps that you would put on your street shoes, move these clamps tight, and then screw them down with a skate key. So they would clamp onto the bottom of your shoes. And sometimes they even stayed on. So that's the old-fashioned uh, roller skate. They don't make skates like that. This is a, maybe a local antique store. So all of a sudden, I wanted roller skates. Boy, howdy, did I want roller I wanted roller skates more than anything in the world. That's all I wanted was roller skates. So I figured, well, let me say I want roller skates. Uh, I do get an allowance. Although why I got an allowance, I have no idea because I never really did anything. <laughs> Things don't change much, right? So... I did get an allowance. It wasn't much. This was back a long time ago. So it took me weeks and weeks to save up. And finally, I had money to buy roller skates. And I said, boy, this is great. Off we go. And then my dad reminds me, son, Mother's Day is coming up Sunday. And I went, uh-oh. Because you have to think of this. I had X amount of dollars. Right? just enough to buy these roller skates and mother's day is coming up and x amount of dollars would cover anything that would cover a mother's day gift and i went oh man what do i because i want these roller skates i mean i want them now i don't want anything i don't want to wait i want i don't want to save up anymore i want these roller skates right now so what do i do so i'm a 10 year old kid having something of an existential crisis and I'm saying, I can't. I want to buy the roller skates. But I got to buy something for mom because if I don't, I'm, I'm toast. I got to do something. So what do I do? What do I do? And I thought about it and thought about it. And then he went, bing, I got it. I'll buy my mother roller skates. And that way, I A, take care of the obligation to my mother, and B, have roller skates. Because the way I envisioned this scenario working out, 
Mother's Day comes, I give her the roller skates, and she says, oh, Jonathan, how thoughtful, but I really can't use roller skates. Here, you take them back. So I figured, wow, that is brilliant. That's inspired. That's genius. That is devious. That is Machiavellian. And I figured, wow, that's what I'll do. I'll buy her roller skates. So I get on my bike, and I drive down to the store. And I buy the roller skates. And I said, boy, here we go, here we go, here we go. I get home, I sneak upstairs to my bedroom, and I hide them. And then I find a box, and I put them in the box. And then I handmade a card, save a couple of, you know, maybe a dime there. And I said, okay, so mom's going to get a handwritten card. Yes, sir, how thoughtful. And roller skates, which, which she will give back to me, and everything's all set and everything's good. So Mother's Day comes. It's a Sunday, the second Sunday in May. And I got up earlier than everybody. I, I always have. I don't know why. I still, no matter what's been going on, no matter where I've been in my life, no matter who, what, when, how, where, I'm always the first one up. Maybe a therapist can probably figure that one out. I have no idea. So I get up early. I take the skates and the handmade card, walk in the kitchen downstairs, and I put them on the table. And I wait, and I wait, and I wait. And I'm watching TV and wasting time and this and that. And finally, my parents wake up. So they come in the kitchen. Mom sees this box on the kitchen table with this little handmade card, which was probably pretty crummy now that I think of it. But anyway, so she says, oh, wow, oh, what a nice card. Oh, it's wonderful. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, I guess. So she opens the box. And I'm going, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. She opens the box, sees the roller skates, and says, Wow! Well, I actually, I don't remember what she said, but it was something along the lines of, Wow! Roller skates! How thoughtful! That's wonderful! And I'm going, well, that's kind of an unusual reaction, but so I will now receive my roller skates. And she says, Oh, wow! That's, that's perfect! And I'm going, per huh? What do you mean perfect? I mean, I'm a 10-year-old kid. My mom is like maybe 31 or 32. I think, man, she's really old. But what's she going to do with these roller skates? So she goes inside, changes her shoes, and puts on street shoes, like flats or something like that. I don't know what they're called. And she goes down to the basement. We had to finish the, the basement. So she, she goes down to the basement. I figure, where is this going? I, I, I don't understand this. So I follow her downstairs, and my dad fo follows me. And we get in the basement, and my mom puts on these roller skates. And I'm thinking, I, I, I don't believe what I'm seeing, huh? So she puts on these roller skates. Takes out the old skate key, cranks it down, and tightens it up, and away she goes. So she starts skating all over the basement. And I'm going, that's impossible. How, how, is, how is this happening? My whole plan has come unglued here. And it turns out, I find out later that morning, that my mom, when she was an early teenager, was some kind of a hotshot champion roller skater. And she's going in circles, skating backwards, doing all this stuff, jumping here and doing that. I go, that's what? How is that possible? So this plan that I thought was going to work like clockwork, the, the gears came unglued or something. I don't know what happened. So, as I said, she was a championship roller skater. So what happened was she liked these skates so much that she kept them in their bed, in my parents' the bedroom where they kept the, the Christmas presents, as I said, a devious kid. So she kept them there, and she kept the roller skates. And every now and then she'd go in the basement and start roller skating. It was almost, it was a, a variation of the telltale heart. Because I'd be upstairs and hear these wheels going downstairs in the basement. She's using the roller skates. I couldn't believe it. So I, yeah, I, I don't know. So I never... And I figured, you know, it's not worth going into their bedroom and stealing the skate. In the first place, my mom was home. That she was a stay-at-home mom. So I couldn't really steal them and use them because she was always there. So I never got roller skates. I never had a pair of roller skates. I, anyway, my interest changed. All of a sudden, I didn't want roller skates anymore. It was too much trouble. It was way too complicated. I forget a heck with it, you know. So next thing I stepped up for was a telescope. And that I got, and everything was fine. But... So, from this cautionary tale, I think we can learn two things. A, never underestimate your mom. You don't know. And two, whatever you do, never buy her roller skates. 
without doing a background check first. So that's my personal <laughs> story about Mother's Day and the roller skates. And so there we go. And oh, oh, whoops, we are going to take a break. And here we go. New to golf or seasoned veteran? You'll enjoy the casual, relaxed atmosphere of Vanderview Golf Course. Two miles from downtown Alfred on Waterwells Road, Vanderview is a nine-hole, executive-length golf course with a driving range on one side of the road and the course on the other. Family-friendly and fun recreation for everyone. Greens fees are one price for unlimited play, $9.50. High school students, only $5. Children, 12 and under, with an adult no charge you can play up to 18 holes or nine holes with a cart and get the second nine holes at no additional charge ladies and senior golfers who don't hit the long ball vanderview's got the executive length that's just right for your game and new this year a season pass for only 100 dollars. that's a lot of golfing fun for a very little bit of money vanderview golf course two miles from downtown alfred on waterwells road Vanderview Golf Course. Oh, and here we are. And we have on the line, I believe, our magical meteorologist, Rob Carolyn. Rob, hi. Hey, good morning, Jonathan. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. So what's going on? That's good. Well, we've got some rain. It's raining pretty hard out there this morning. Uh, we've got a cold front west of the region that is going to uh, lead to the rain coming to an end a little later on today and actually uh, some improving weather as we head into the uh, Mother's Day weekend. I wish we could hang on to the nice weather through the entire weekend, but in this weather pattern, which has been so soggy since last month, we're going to be unable to do so. So my recommendation would be uh, kind of put everything on the side and get out and enjoy tomorrow. Uh, it'll be a nice day, a little on the cool side, but certainly uh, we'll get a chance to enjoy some sunshine. This morning, we've got rain. Uh, some of it heavy right now around the Dansville area, back uh, right now all the way down towards about uh, Clarion, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, this is going to have Tensi, though, to move quickly off to the east. Should be done by about 11 this morning. I think we'll have mostly cloudy skies this afternoon. We're rather mild right now. Temperatures generally across the region in the 60s. And it does look like this will be the warmest part of the day. Temperatures may have Tensi drift back towards 60 later this afternoon. Jonathan, tonight we're partly cloudy. We'll fall back to about 40 to 45. As I mentioned, a decent day coming up for tomorrow. Partial sun on the cool side, 60. Clouds tomorrow night, 40. For Mother's Day, probably going to want to make some indoor plants. Cloudy skies, scattered showers, 50 to 55. Showers may linger into Monday. Sunrise this morning, 553. It'll set tonight at 820. Well, Rob, you know, I read this morning somewhere, I believe that somewhere in Colorado received 16 inches of snow yesterday. Am I right on yes, that? Yes, in the mountains. Yep, yep, in the uh, southwestern part of the state. In fact, it's snowing in southwestern Colorado and northern New Mexico this morning. Uh, they also had some snow around the Duluth area earlier this week. They picked up over nine inches of snowfall. And again, it's an explanation <laughs> as to why the pattern's so unusual this spring. We've got all that unusually cool weather in the central part of the country. It's warm in the southeast, and we're in the battleground right in between those two air masses. Well, Rob, you got to watch that global warming. That's all, that's all i got to say. That's all I'm saying. Global warming. Here we go. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Be, uh, 60 degrees tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We'll see you next week. Bye. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles, here's Eddie Garcia. In the NBA playoffs, second round action, big wins for the home teams to force deciding game sevens. We had the Trailblazers beating the Nuggets 119 to 108. Damian Lillard, 32 points. CJ McCollum, 30 points. And Rodney Hood, 25 points off the bench for the Blazers in the win as they even that series at 3 3 to force a game seven Sunday in Denver. And the 76ers beat the Raptors 112 to 101. Philadelphia had six players in double digits led by Jimmy Butler's 25 points and Ben Simmons' 21 points. That series is tied at 3 3. A game seven will be Sunday in Toronto. Golden State Warriors star Kevin Durant had an MRI and confirmed his strained calf injury. He is not expected to play in Game 6 or, if necessary, in Game 7. In the team's playoff series against the Houston Rockets, Warriors head coach Steve Kerr said he's confident Durant would be able to return to the Western Conference Finals if Golden State is able to advance. NHL Stanley Cup playoffs Game 1 Eastern Conference Finals. The Bruins score four goals in the third period to beat the Hurricanes 5-2 and grab a 1-0 series lead. From the Fox Business Network, billions of dollars worth of Chinese goods headed to the U.S. will now have to pay a 25% tariff to enter the country. We're the piggy bank that everybody steals from, including China. We've been paying China $500 billion a year. The Trump administration increased the tax today as a way to force China to negotiate. Beijing says 
it will retaliate. All this is expected to drive up costs for U.S. consumers. Investors concerned higher tariffs will hurt the U.S. and global economies pushed stocks lower yesterday. The Dow slid 139 points. Senator Bernie Sanders and Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez want to cap credit card interest rates at 15 percent. And Ben and & Jerry's wants to develop a system for humanely produced dairy products. The company formed a Dairy Advisory Council to help reach that goal. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Carmen Roberts. It's happening to you every night. One snores and the other can't sleep. But now, there is a quick and easy to use solution. A natural solution. Snore Stop, the number one selling anti snoring medicine in the U.S. Thank you, Snore Stop. You saved my marriage. It's time to try Snore Stop and make every night a better night for both of you. Spray or tablets are available today at Rite Aid and CVS or online at snorestop.com. And we're back here. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yes, uh, I was going to tell you about this earlier this week, and I didn't get around to it, and I guess uh, now's the time to do it. Uh, there was a story, uh, this is from CNN, as a matter of fact. There were two teenagers, I think uh, 17 years old. <laughs> yeah, two teenage, uh, 17-year-olds, Tyler Smith and Heather Brown, went swimming off a beach somewhere in Florida. And they got caught up in the... Uh, undertow and they're pushed out to sea and they're getting further and further from shore and it just keeps going and going and going and all of a sudden they were like two miles offshore in an undertow and they can't get back so now they're treading water and treading water and treading water and it's cold and they're getting really tired and they're kind of running out of gas so to speak so this guy in a yacht, a 53-foot yacht, is about 200 yards away. And they were yelling so loud, or screaming, I guess, so loud, that the people on the boat heard him. So he goes to these kids, and he rescues them. And so he and his friends haul these kids on board, and they put blankets on them and something warm to drink and all that stuff, and they thaw them out a little bit. And it's so essentially, I mean, if he hadn't been there and seen these kids, they would have died. They would have drowned. <laughs> and the name of the boat was the Amen. That was the name of the boat, the Amen. Matter of fact, I have a photograph of it here. And a nice looking boat, too, by the way. So the name, the name of the boat's the Amen. Wow. Wow. And the first words that came out of my mouth said uh, the girl was, God is real. So how do you like that? The amen. And the guy who owns the boat says he plans to restore it and had been thinking of changing the name. But he says that is off the table now. So it will forever be the amen. I mean, how cool is that? Now, I normally don't do uh, this day in history, only because I leave that to the historians, so I can't really, uh, I'm not really qualified. But this is kind of interesting. In uh, 1872, now this is 1872, American social, on this day, American social reformer and women's rights activist Victoria Woodhull is nominated for president of the United States by the newly formed Equal Rights Party. And her nomination was ratified the following month. So she ran for president in 1872. Victoria Woodhull. And when you consider that the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote, isn't that disgusting? I mean, in 19, uh, August 18th, 1920, it was ratified. Women finally had the right to vote. So they could make dumb decisions just like men can. Okay, they had the right to be equally dumb. Okay, but it was 1920, and she was nominated for president in 1872. Wow. Anyway, uh, that seems to be the end of the show. And uh, get my umbrella. <laughs> I don't have an umbrella. I'm only kidding. Anyway, uh, guys don't use umbrellas. Okay, we go out there and we get wet because we are men. We're hardy men. So okay, I will see you Monday at 8:05. Bye. <laughs>